In this video, I will show you how to create a GUI for your PowerShell scripts on Windows. There are multiple ways how you can do it, but in particular, we will take a look at ready-to-use GUI templates that we just need to configure and display from inside the PowerShell script. A perfect such GUI template example would be Zenity, which is a tool available over on Linux. So it would be nice if we could use Zenity or a tool like Zenity on Windows as well. And that's what I will show you in this video. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I am now here on the official Zenity manual page. Zenity is a simple command line tool that can create predefined dialogues, like for instance, this one, where the user can fill out some input fields. The text and the fields are configurable. You can basically add as many fields as you like. This one would be used in a script where the user needs to input a lot of data at once. The best example would be if the user needs to fill out a form, and that's also how this dialogue is called. Another use case would be if the script needs to present data in a certain way, let's say as a table, in that case we have a list dialogue. This is how it looks like. Again, you can basically have as many columns as you like and also as many rows as you like. Now, in case the script needs to visualize very complex stuff, Zenity also supports displaying full HTML sites from file or from an URL. And here is a simple example how this can look like. So Zenity is perfect for use cases where the user needs to input data or you need to present data. As said, Zenity is a tool used on Linux, usually in combination with bash scripts. On Windows, we could use Zenity in WSL, but then we also need PowerShell in WSL, and this would make things too complicated, and it's not the point of this video. So it would be nice to have a native Zenity version on Windows that we could use in PowerShell on Windows. And thankfully, there is one, or two. On this GitHub page, we have an alternative Zenity version that is cross-platform. It says it is a port of the Zenity command to both Windows and Mac OS. To me, this seems to be more of a remake than a port, but nevertheless, it tries to be compatible with the official Zenity release. At the time of recording, it's not fully compatible, and here you can see the list of dialogues that are implemented. Some dialogues are missing, like the previously shown forms dialog or the HTML info dialog, and some, like the list dialog, supports only a single column and no images. This is how it looks like on Mac OS, this is the Windows version, and down here is the original Linux version showing only a single column, but this one should actually support more. So it's not really a drop-in replacement, but if you don't need all the official Zenity features, then this version is the way to go. You can install this one on Mac OS using Homebrew, on Windows using Scoop, or on both using Go. Or if you're just old school, go to latest release. And here you can download a zip package. I'm using Windows, so let's download the 64-bit version. Download complete, here it is. And if you look inside, we can see that this is just a simple executable. Now to use Zenity, I have prepared a PowerShell script. This one, random API Zenity, which I actually translated from a bash script, this one here by the same name. I used this bash script in a previous video where I showed you how you can build a GUI for your scripts on Linux using Zenity. So if you want to use Zenity on Linux and you want practical examples how to implement it inside your scripts, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. In the mentioned previous video, I used a reference bash script without Zenity, which is this one here, and then also one with Zenity, which is this one. And now for this video, I have the same thing in PowerShell, one script without Zenity and one with Zenity. First, let's execute the script without Zenity. I will open the terminal. Here is PowerShell. And now let's execute the first script, random API. This one works the same as the bash script from the previous video. 
So it is a random API example because it reads data from a random API on the internet. It prints out the platform, which is Windows, then the path to the script and a message from the random API. And then we get the first prompt, please enter a number of users greater than one. So this script doesn't have a GUI, we just type into the console. Let's say I don't care about the number of users and I will write nope. Invalid input and we get the prompt again. Now let's say I want 10 users. Now we get a simple table, 10 users with icon, ID and name. Here is the next prompt. Please enter a row number between 1 and 10. Here are the row numbers and let's go with 2. Now we get more detail about user 2, which is Mario. This is correct. Again, we have the icon, ID, name, email and phone. All of this data was randomly generated by the API. Now the goal here is to create a GUI for this script using Zenity so that we can, for instance, display real images instead of just file names. The images were also downloaded from a random API and I downloaded them into a special drive, which is actually inside the RAM memory, inside a RAM disk. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create, run and benchmark a RAM disk on Windows. So if you want to use a RAM disk on Windows yourself and boost performance, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now let's see how the GUI for this script could look like using Zenity. Now as mentioned, the previously shown cross-platform Zenity version does not support all the Zenity features. Currently it doesn't support a list with multiple columns, which we need here to display the table. Since this table is a core feature of the script, it doesn't make sense to use the limited Zenity version. But thankfully there is a real port for Zenity on Windows. On this GitHub page we have a real Zenity port and this one is quite old as you can see. Here the official Zenity release 3.20 was taken, patched and built using Sigwin on Windows. And here it says this is correct as of October 2009, so it's really old, but at least it is a real port and it should have all the features from this particular version, which is good enough for our PowerShell script. To download this one, here is the link, which is broken, unfortunately, but there is another one, this one here from a GitLab page, which is a completely different repository for a linguistic annotation management assistant. And here they took the same Zenity release and uploaded it. So we can use this link instead. Let's install it. Finished. And now we can run the second script. Let's open PowerShell. And this one works the same as the previous script, but instead of the command line, it uses the Zenity GUI. So let's run it. Here we get the first Zenity dialog. So again, we have the platform, the path to the script, the message from the random API. In addition, we have the Zenity version, which is 3.20. And down here is the first prompt. Please enter a number of users greater than one. Let's try nope. We get an error dialog, invalid input. This one is also from Zenity. Okay. Now the prompt again. Let's say 50. This is now the progress dialog, also from Zenity. Now we get the table and this time we also have the user images. Let's select one. I will go with Davis and double click it. Here we now have a bigger avatar image and some user detail. Davis, this is correct. So all of this was done using Zenity in PowerShell. Let's take a look at the scripts. On the left hand side we have the original script that uses command line prompts. And on the right, we have the same script, but this one uses Zenity. I will not go through the scripts in detail because they basically work the same as the bash scripts that I covered in the previous video. I will just show you where Zenity is used, but if you're interested, you can find all the scripts down in the description. So basically Zenity replaces all the prints and prompts from the previous script. For instance, to get a user count, we call Zenity with the entry dialog. In the original, this was just a simple read prompt. Invalid input was again the same prompt. And in the new one, it is an error dialog. For the progress, the original script just writes loading users to the console and it just repeats that. The new one 
starts a Zenit progress dialog as a separate process, as you can see. And this process then gets the completion percentage through standard input, which then updates the progress. Once we have the users, the old one is just writing the table to the console. It nicely formats the table and that's it. And the new one uses the Zenity list dialog, which supports images. Then once we select a user, the old one just writes user detail in plain text. And the new one actually starts two Zenity dialogs. The first one for the user detail, and this is just a simple text info dialog. And the second one is again a list dialog, but this one is only used because it supports images. So the only thing this one does, it displays the avatar image in a separate dialog. And that's basically it. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. This is not the first time that I created a GUI with a PowerShell script. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create a full WPF GUI in PowerShell. So if you want to create and to run a WPF GUI from PowerShell yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.